hello. Today we are here to talk about the worst books I read in 2021, which most of these really, this uh, the better title for this would be like most disappointing books of 2021, but that's kind of like a garbled whatever. We'll just call it the worst. I have two books that I actually genuinely did not like, both of which I read for Bo Blades of Bodice Ripper Book Club and both of which were Leanna picks. I'm so sorry, Leanna. But two books I genuinely did not like at all. Most of these though were just disappointments. Like I either wanted to like them better or I dnf them or I did, I'm just bummed that I didn't get on the hype train for these because I go into every book hoping that I'm gonna like it. Like, I mean, life is too short. I do dnf books if I get into them and I'm not enjoying them. So I'm not gonna force myself to read something I'm hating, but yeah, I always hope I'm gonna like a book. And when I don't, it's a bummer. So with that in mind, let's talk about some books that bum me out. Okay, two books I dnf that were, I wanted to mention as disappointments because they're very highly hyped books that I'm sure, not even I'm sure, I know for a fact a lot of people really enjoyed. And in both cases, I can see who would like them. I just didn't like them. The first was The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter, which is a fantasy set and like a magical version of like an African empire. And I think the world building is really rad in this, like the magic is really cool. And it's a very plot heavy. So like if you are somebody who reads for cool magic and for like fast paced, lots of plot in a fantasy, I can 100% see this working for you. For me, the issue is that I just felt like the character development in this was like non-existent. And around the 40-ish percent mark, the only character who I had any kind of connection with died. And so I was like, I do not care about our main character at all. So I think that there's nothing left for me to connect with in this book, which really made me sad because yeah, I know a lot of people really love the series, but for me, it was just, I didn't like our main character. I wasn't really connecting with him. I didn't feel like there was enough development for him. For my taste, I tend to be a very character driven reader. So I was just like, I'm not going to keep going in this, you know, big chunky fantasy book, fantasy series. Let's just cut it off here. And then I also DNF The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. And I DNF that because the writing itself is really nice. There's a certain kind of tone or touch to this that I can see being very readable and enjoyable for people. When I tell you I have not been triggered by a book hardly ever. Like there's very been rarely been times where it's like this book caused me an actual strong enough emotional reaction that it like messed up my day or week. And this book did. I would give such strong content warnings on this for suicidal ideation and self harm. If that is something that you've ever struggled with, I did not know that that was a part of this book going into it. And I really wish that people had would talk about that a little bit more because yeah, I was under the impression that this was just going to be light, easy, breezy sort of a take on It's a Wonderful Life. And while there is that is there, it's in the context of some very dark mental health stuff. So I think I just wasn't prepared for what this book was and it was too much for me. Then I've got Clouds of Witness and Whose Body by Dorothy Sayers. And really let's just put the entire attempt I had to finish reading the Lord Peter Whimsy series in the most disappointing category for this year, because I set up like a whole ass read along for this. Like I put a thread up on my discord. I thought this was going to be like a group reading project for the year, sort of like when I did Miss Marple or Project Poro. Like I thought this was going to be something for us to read and enjoy some classic mystery together. And Gaudy Night and Busman's Honeymoon, I have previously said are two of my all time favorite books, but I think just early 20s Mara and current early 30s Mara just don't have the same taste when it comes to the Peter Whimsy books anymore. I DNF'd this project because I just could not get through these books anymore. They're not bad books, but they're just not they're They don't have the writing style to get me through them. It was a struggle for me to get through them. And I particularly didn't like the two early novels that I read. Sorry, my camera overheated and I don't remember what I was saying, but I think I was just basically wrapping up the fact that I just don't like the Lord Peter Whimsy books as current day me. And that's sad, like, cause I was really, I'd been saving that series up to read because I thought it was gonna be such a treat. And it just turned out to not be 
So I don't know, maybe I need to read some Nio Marsh, like some, try to finish off that whole series or some Josephine Tay. There's like other ones I can try, but that really bummed me out guys. Like that was probably my most disappointing situation. Cause I really expected those were going to be like four, four and a half, five star books. And sadly they were not. From Blood and Ash by Jennifer Armentrout. This is another one I read for Blades and Bodice Rippers. And I think like I enjoyed the book while I was in it. As time has gone on, I, I like it less and less just because I get mad thinking about how popular this book is and I just frankly don't understand it. Like I think that this is wildly overhyped. I don't get it. That's <laughs> just the bottom line. And I certainly don't understand how this won the Goodreads Romance Best Of for 2020, which for me, Goodreads Choice Awards are always popularity contests. There were so many good romances that came out in 2020. The fact that this was the winner and the most popular, I am so disappointed by and do, do not understand. I've also heard that that series really goes downhill even from where it starts later on. So do with that what you will. Then Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty. This was my first book from Leanne Moriarty and I did not really enjoy it very much. I the, the humor didn't quite work for me. It isn't really a mystery, but it's kind of trying to be. And I think that there's just so many characters in this that you don't really get to like connect fully with any of them. I don't know. I thought this was a weird book. I did have a lot of people tell me like, oh, you shouldn't have started with that one. Like that's like not one of her good ones. So maybe I'll try her again if there's another plot synopsis that sounds appealing to me, but it was not a good first outing with her. I would not describe this really as a mystery or suspense or a thriller, which is kind of what it's sold as. I don't, I don't even know what I would call this a weird book. It is not, not also not an isolated close circle mystery, which is why I picked it up because that's sort of what it sounded like. But anyway, that one was a disappointment. Uh, the only one of these I still have a copy of is Neon Gods by Katie Roberts because I have not unhauled it yet, but this wasn't bad. I just was disappointed because if this had been 150 pages instead of like 377, I think I actually would have really liked this. It's sort of, it's ostensibly a Hades and Persephone retelling. Eh, I'm not totally convinced it does that exactly. Exactly. I can see that there are things in this to like. I liked the actual characters. I mostly liked their dynamic and uh, it's a cool setup. Basically, it's like a retelling of Greek mythology and sort of like this sinister city of Olympus. We're gonna have all these other retellings. We get all of these other Greek mythological characters in this. So yeah, I mean, I definitely think that there are things to like about this. I think for me though, this is definitely a case where it was so hyped up that it impacted my enjoyment of the book because because I was expecting that this was just gonna be so good. I will say the sex scenes in this give what they're supposed to give. They're very steamy. And if you like some, you know, light erotica play stuff, you know, I can see why people would enjoy that part. So that was good. I, it, this wasn't terrible. I just think that this is far too long considering how much plot and character, actual character development there is in this. I just don't understand why this is so hyped. This is probably my expectations were too high for the book that I actually got. And then the last of my disappointments before we move into the two ones that I think of as like, the worst is Blood and Honey from Shelby Mahern because this was the sequel to Serpent and Dove from her, which I think came out in 2018 or 19. And I didn't think Serpent and Dove was like the best book I'd ever read, but I thought it was soapy and fun and like kind of self-aware about its soapy aspects in a way that I appreciate from YA fantasy. Though really, let's call it new adult fantasy probably because there's definitely some like actual pound town in that book. I just thought it was like fun. It wasn't super, you know, deep or memorable, but it was just a good time. It also opened the door for the series to go places that would continue to be entertaining. And there's this book is just so repetitive. Nothing happens in this book. The dynamic between the characters is not nearly as fun. And originally I believe that it was a series that was meant to be a duology and they changed it to a trilogy and you can just feel it. So for that reason, it was definitely a disappointment because I'm not gonna finish that trilogy. And uh, it's just a bummer because I thought the first one was really fun and entertaining and the second one wasn't fun or entertaining. So like the parts of it that aren't as strong became even more sharply evident to me as a reader. Okay, and then the two books I have is worst. <laughs> both picks from Leanna. I gave both of these one and a half stars. And I should say, I appreciate what both of these books did for subgenres that they spawned in speculative fiction. So they are The Black Company by Glenn Cook and Shadow and Claw by Jean Wolfe. The Black Company, I actually liked better than Shadow and Claw, I'm gonna say, cause I at least didn't, it wasn't super long and things were happening and I didn't feel like I was losing my mind, but I didn't enjoy it. 
and it definitely, you know, I appreciate its establishment of the grim dark fantasy subgenre. This is definitely dark. There's very, there's a lot of violence. There's SA. So, you know, if that's not your vibe, you're not going to like this book at all. For me, it was more just like, it felt very telling rather than showing. And the writing itself, I, I just couldn't get into it. I will say when I went and read the Wikipedia page to remind myself of everything that happened in the plot prior to us having the book club, I was like, oh, this overall macro plot of where this story apparently goes sounds pretty cool. So like maybe if I had kept going, I would have ended up retrospectively enjoying that one more. I don't know. Shadow and Claw made me so mad and is a great example of why I should DNF because if I had DNF'd it at about the 100, 150 mark when I was like, I just don't think that this is for me, I think I would have left it with much warmer feelings and it would have been more of a disappointment than the worst to me. I kept going because it was for book club and I wanted to finish it for book club and I had the worst time. I did not enjoy it. It is the progenitor of sort of like science fantasy books. And I can see that a certain kind of reader who is very into sort of like Easter eggs and puzzle solving or like trying to figure out what the author is referring to, I can see that that would be appealing. I know Leanna and Bethany both really like this book. I hated this. I did not enjoy it. And if you like what happens in the very, I if I tried to just tell you in words what happens in this book, you would be like, what is this bizarre, awful fever dream you're describing to me? And I'm like, yeah, I know. I had to read 500 pages of this. So happy birthday to me. I don't know. I just really did not, <laughs> I did not like this book at all. But again, I appreciate that it helped establish the subgenre of science fantasy. I do think that for both of these books, I can totally see that there is an audience for them. They were the worst for me as a reader. They're not like the worst books of all time. I don't understand how anybody likes them. I just, I should not have kept reading either of them. Well, really particularly Shadow and Claw because Black Company was pretty short, but Shadow and Claw, I just should have DNF because I could tell I wasn't enjoying it and I just continued to not enjoy it. So those were my two definite worsts for the year, which is only fair because I feel like we've inflicted a lot of pain on Leanna in that book club. So she should get to inflict some pain on us. <laughs> so yeah, those were my worst or like most really more most disappointing reads of the year. Definitely let me know what you thought about any of them uh, in the comments below and what your worst or most disappointing reads of the year were. Let me know that below. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. Hope you're having an absolute lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!